I'm Kotatsu Nishino, Director of Public Relations and Cultural Affairs Division of the Consulate General of Japan in Hong Kong. Thank you very much for joining us today. Our, M our MC today will be Professor Takashi Hibiki. He's a, the Chair Professor of Thermal Fluid in Engineering Department of Mechanical Engineering of City University of Hong Kong. Global STEM Professorship granted from Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. And the Professor uh, Emeritus uh, School of Nuclear Engineering, Purdue University, USA. I will pass the mic to Professor Hibiki. Professor, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Nishino. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Takashi Hibiki, and I am your MC today. This event is co-organized by the Asian Society and the Consulate General of Japan in Hong Kong. Everyone should have a set of presentation materials on hand. Please let our staff know if you do not. Besides that, you will find three cans of peach juice called Momo no Megumi, which is significant uh, signature products of the Fukushima Prefecture. I hope you all like it. During the first half of the briefing, related agencies from the government of Japan and the TEPCO will give presentation in English. Then we'll have a 15 minutes break. After the break, we'll have a Q&A session with English Japanese interpretation. Now let us begin the program. Let us welcome Ambassador Okada Kenichi, Consulate General of Japan in Hong Kong, to deliver an opening remarks. Ambassador Okada, please. Thank you, Professor Hibiki, for the kind introduction. Can you hear me well? Is microphone okay? Yes. So, thank you. So, uh, dear friends from the media of Hong Kong and Macau, good afternoon. Thank you so much for participating in this briefing organized by Muslims. I am Kenichi Okada, Consul General of Japan and Ambassador which covers both Hong Kong and Macau. Thank you so much again for taking time out of your very busy schedule to be here with us today. Thank you so much. And today's briefing is on the water treated by advanced liquid processing system, which is called ARPS treated water. This year marks the 12th anniversary of the Great East Japan earthquake. Immediately after the disaster, Hong Kong government provided us with so many food, clothing, and other material assistances to the prefecture of Fukushima, Miyagi, and Iwate. Furthermore, People in Hong Kong and Macau were kind enough to write so many letters of sympathy and make donations and organize charity events. We clearly still remember those special kindness and friendship which was extended from the people in Macau and Hong Kong. So once again, on behalf of the Japanese government, I'd like to offer sincerest appreciation to the people in Hong Kong and Macau for such warm and encourage, encouraging assistance in such a challenging times. Thank you so much. In April 2011, the government of Japan announced the basic policy on the handling of the Arab treated water. 
in strict compliance with international law and subject to the reviews by the IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, Agency. Japan is going to discharge Arab's treated water into the sea from around this coming spring and or summer. Actually, this discharge has been assessed by IAEA as being in line with international practice. And IAEA will also monitor this discharge before, during, and after the discharge. We understand that there is a high level of interest from the people in Hong Kong and Macau on these issues. At the same time, they also noted that some press report referred to Arab's treated water as contaminated water. So we are again keenly aware the need to provide accurate information in a transparent manner with a lot of scientific evidence. I hope today's briefing will strengthen your understanding about the safety and handling of this Arps treated water. After the disaster 12 years ago, 55 countries and regions all over the world introduced import control measures on Japanese food products. In Japan, we introduced several measures on the production stage, including the contamination of farmland and feed control. And furthermore, we established a system to prevent the distribution of any food products which fail to meet the food safe product safety. So the thorough safety has been sufficiently ensured in Japan by monitoring. Without confirming that there is no exceedance in terms of the food safety, any food product cannot be exported abroad. And actually, Japan's standard of food safety is stricter than international standards. And actually also, in any destination countries, inspections has not found any exceedance for the past nine years. So in response to this Japan's effort, already 43 out of 55 countries and regions has lifted import control measures. Japan's stance to make sure that food safety is perfect is not wavering, even in relation to the discharge of Arabs related water. That means there should be no negative impact on the food safety, foodstuffs like agricultural product or fishery product after the discharge of Arabs treated water. Because Hong Kong and Macau has been one of the most important export market for Japan's food products like agriculture and fishery products, and Japanese government believes the relations between Japan and Hong Kong and Japan and Macau is very, very important. So Japanese government we are more than happy to offer as much information as possible so that people in Hong Kong and people in Macau can continue to enjoy Japanese food and Japanese restaurant without any apprehension. Today, we have lots of uh, experts from Japan, from the Agency of Natural Resources and Energy, from the Ministry of Agriculture, 
forestry, fishery, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the fishery agencies are at present this press briefing. And we are more than happy to answer any questions from you with high degree of transparency and a lot of scientific evidences, and most importantly, with the most sincerity. I hope uh, all of you can stay here for the remainder of this session, and I hope this briefing will be of any help for you to understand better about the handling and the safety of ARPS treated water. Once again, thank you so much for your participation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Okada. Before inviting our first speaker, please take a look at the introductory video on arbitrated water prepared by the Tokyo Electric Power Company. TEPCO Shorts, Alps-Treated Water. Number one, what is Alps-Treated Water? Multinuclide removal equipment is commonly called ALPS, and it is used to remove radioactive materials. Various radioactive materials contained in contaminated water, other than tritium, are removed by adsorbing them sequentially in the connected filters. Water treated with ALPS is currently stored in tanks. This is ALPS treated water. Tritium, a radioactive material that exists as water and a relative of hydrogen, will remain after treatment with ALPS. But other radioactive materials can be removed to concentrations below the government regulations. We analyze the water treated with ALPS and make all the data available on TEPCO's website for everyone to see. TEPCO Shorts, Alps Treated Water. Number two, what about tritium that can be removed with Alps? Contaminated water containing various radioactive materials is purified until the concentrations of these radioactive materials fulfill government regulations, with the exception of tritium that cannot be removed by Alps because it has the same properties as water. Water in storage that has been treated but does not meet regulatory regulations will be repurified until it does. Since tritium will remain in the water treated with Alps, it will be diluted with a large amount of seawater, more than 100 times the quantity being diluted, so that tritium concentrations are reduced to less than 1,500 becquerels per liter. This is 1 40th of the government regulation for tritium concentrations in discharged water. Water that fulfills government regulations will then be discharged via an undersea tunnel. TEPCO Shorts, Alps Treated Water. Number three, how do you check the safety of the sea? We have been continually on the sea since the accident in 2011 by measuring the concentrations of radioactive materials in the water. From 32 locations inside and outside the harbor, seawater is regularly sampled to measure the concentrations of cesium and tritium. From April 2022, we have strengthened tritium monitoring increasing the number of measurement locations and the frequency of measurements. And we've strengthened not only the monitoring of seawater, but also of marine organisms, such as fish and seaweed. Monitoring results are available on TEPCO's website. Additionally, third discuss the monitoring results. I hope the videos has provided an idea on what outstreeted water is to all of you. Next, let's invite 
Ms. Yuki Tanabe onto the stage. She is Director for International Issues at the Nuclear Accident Response Office of Agency for Natural Resources and Energy, Ministry of, Eca Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, METI. She will share with us some basic concept and the progress on the discharge of arbitrated water. Ms. Tanabe, please. Thank you very much. My name is Yuki Tanabe from METI. Thank you very much for this opportunity today. First of all, I would like to uh, invite your attention to the fact that reconstruction in Fukushima is progressing steadily. Industries, including fisheries, are uh, also revitalized. Fish auction in Ukedo Fishery Harbor was resumed in 2020. People in Japan enjoy Fukushima food. Uh, we sometimes have promotion events and a lot of people come and enjoy. If you are interested, please look at a short video of Ukedo Fishery Harbor. I wrote the internet address in the left lower. <coughs> the commissioning of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station is premise of reconstruction of Fukushima, which is continuous activity to gradually reduce the risk of radioactive materials to the surrounding area. The storage tanks of water exceeding 1,000 become an obstacle to secure a site for the planned decommissioning work. Therefore, it is necessary to properly discharge upstreeted water into the sea in a safe way. However, I would like to emphasize that uh, the discharge will not start until uh, the nuclear regulatory authorities' inspections and the publication of the IAEA report. The important thing is that contaminated water is not going to be discharged. As you can see from the picture below, contaminated water becomes treated water by purification. Uh, there was a question uh, I received beforehand regarding other options uh, than the discharge into the sea. There was over six years of discussion on handling of output treated water with external experts. Five options shown here were discussed. And it was concluded discharging uh, into the sea is feasible based on precedent and practices, and it can be implemented reliably with proper monitoring. The IAEA reviewed this discussion and stated that it is based on sufficiently comprehensive analysis and on a sound scientific and technical basis. There was also a question regarding the radionuclides in the water to be discharged. Let me explain about ALPS treated water. By going through the system called ALPS, the water will be purified to meet the regulatory standards other than tritium. And tritium will be less than 1,500 becquerel per litre by dilution. And this 1,500 becquerel per liter is 1 40th of regulatory standard of tritium. And this is also 1 7th of WHO standards for drinking water. Next is about carbon-14. Uh, radionuclides uh, called carbon-14 in alpus treated water is significantly less than the regulatory standard and the amount contained in the human body. Carbon-14 exists in the human body about 2,500 becquerel for a person weighing 60 kilograms. 
And the regulatory concentration limit in Japan is 2,000 buckel per liter. And uh, concentration uh, of maximum concentration number in tanks is 215 buckel per liter. And most of the water contains much less carbon-14. This is about tritium. As a relative of hydrogen, tritium, is exi tritium exists in rain, sea, and tap water, as well as inside of our body. It is not accumulated in human body and is excreted together with water from the body. The annual amount of tritium to be discharged will be at the level below the operational limit of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station before the 2011 accident. It is lower than the ones of many nuclear facilities, both in Japan and abroad. The uh, number is 22 trillion becquerel per year. And it is the government policy to keep the number uh, below this uh, 22 trillion becquerel per year. And you can see this uh, number is significantly smaller than a reprocessing plant in France. This uh, world map uh, is about nuclear facilities in the world and uh, discharge, discharge of tritium. And tritium uh, is discharged in compliance with the laws and regulations of each country and region. The pink boxes uh, represent the numbers of liquid tritium emission is greater than 22 uh, trillion becquerel. As you can see, a lot of nuclear facilities discharge more tritium in East Asia than Fukushima. I will skip this slide. Uh, Tepico is going to explain. And so this is uh, the result of the diffusion simulation of Alpha treated water. According to the diffusion simulation, the concentration of tritium will be almost the same as the level of after three kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. There were some questions regarding the impact of other countries from this simulation, we think there will be no transboundary effect. The IAEA team also reviewed this simulation, the result of this simulation. Recently, there was also a simulation by Korean institution. Uh, it was in February this year. The conclusion was that the release of wastewater from Japan, Fukushima nuclear power plant would have a negligible effect on South Korean waters. This slide will be also explained by typicals I will skip. Finally, uh, there was some uh, question about monitoring. Under the comprehensive radiation monitoring plan, the government of Japan has been conducting sea area monitoring since 2011 Samples of seawater, sediment, and marine biota are regularly collected and analyzed. The monitoring will also be uh, monitored and reviewed by third parties, including the International Atomic Energy Agency. The results, are, uh, the results of the monitoring by the government of Japan is uh, Open on the public, uh, open to public on the website. Japan has been taking measures in strict compliance with international law and undergoing rigorous review by the IAEA. Japan will continue to do so in the future. Uh, I will skip the rest of the slides uh, for the time constraints. I may use them uh, when I answer to your more questions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Next speaker is Mr. Sato Gaku, 
He's manager for medium and long-term planning group, project management office, Fukushima Daiichi D&D &D Engineering Company, Tokyo Electric Power Company Holdings. He will share with us discharge of the altered water while securing safety. Mr. Sato, please. Thank you very much, Professor Hibiki. And good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is Gak Sato, and I'm from uh, Tokyo. I will explain our current plan uh, for uh, discharging the Alps treated water. This slide shows the four most crucial points when discussing about the safety of the Alps treated water uh, discharge to the ocean. In next slide, uh, I will explain these in detail. Now skip a slide. This slide shows uh, the simplified picture of this uh, facility. Yes. Uh, in the upper left, uh, you'll see uh, three columns. Uh, those columns represent tanks for the storage of upstreamed water, etc. About 65 percent uh, of water out of uh, 1.3 million cubic meters stored it's with higher concentration of radioactive materials uh, than the uh, discharge standard. This water will be thoroughly purified by ALPS until the concentration becomes lower than the discharge standard. That is the point number one. Now, there is another set of columns uh, uh, in the middle. Uh, this is the measurement and confirmation facility. This facility consists of three tank groups with agitators and circulation pumps, and it used to homogenize for sampling. Uh, 13 nucleus, including tritium, are to be measured and assessed if the concentration of uh, 29 nuclei other than tritium are lower than the standard. If it fails, uh, the water will send back for retreatment and will be never discharged without appropriate retreatment. This is number two. Even after the ALP treatment, the tritium still remains in the water because uh, uh, this nuclide is very difficult to remove. This is why the dilution is necessary. Uh, by dilution, uh, tritium concentration will become less than uh, 1,500 becquerel per liter. It's uh, one seventh of guidance level of WHO drinking water quality uh, guidance, guideline. And just in case of any uh, malfunction that hampers uh, appropriate dilution or discharge, a set of emergency isolation valves uh, are automatically and immediately closed to stop the discharge. This is the number three. As mentioned earlier, the concentration of tritium in the water discharge is reduced by 1,500 brickwell per liter, or, or lower by dilution, and the amount of limited up to 22 terabrickwell yearly. Those numbers were taken from the previous or current practices. This is the fourth point. And I will go back to the slides. And this slide explains uh, why and how uh, the stagnant water, and called a contaminated water, is being generated. Since the accident in 2020, uh, 2011, water has been injected into the reactor to cool the fuels. Since uh, fuels were damaged 
and the tr uh, radioactive materials were dispersed within the containment. Uh, radionuclides uh, dissolved in the water. Uh, this water is called stagnant water accumulating in those uh, buildings. Due to the damage of the building, uh, rainwater and the groundwater are coming in. Uh, these are uh, mixed with the stagnant water and increasing the amount. To suppress the volume increase, the stagnant water is reused for coarse cooling, but still the excess is uh, sent to Alps and finally stored in tank. Uh, Alps is designed and installed to remove uh, 62 radionuclides in the stagnant water. This figure shows the trend of the concentration of uh, cesium-137 uh, at the inlet and the outlet of Alps. Red dot and uh, hollow circles indicate one at the inlet, and the other dots are at, at the outlet. And the blue dotted line shows the regulatory limit for cesium-137. By Alps, the concentration is reduced by four to six order of magnitude, and it's well below uh, the regulatory limit, limit. Likewise, the other radionuclides uh, can be removed appropriately by Alps. Some of you might be interested in carbon-14. Carbon-14 is naturally occurring uh, radionuclides and also uh, discharged from a uh, nuclear fuel reprocessing plant worldwide. The amount of carbon-14 with Alps treated water annually discharged is far less than those natural and artificial sources. In addition, what is the Japanese regulatory concentration limit for discharge is 2,000 brequel per liter. The maximum concentration confirmed in Alps treated water is 215 and the uh, busiest zone is one, uh, 10 to uh, 20 brequel per liter, as you see. The concentrations become lower by the dilution and even lower in the sea uh, after discharge. Uh, uh, TEPCO conducted a radiological environmental impact assessment following the method by internationally recognized uh, entities such as the IEEA and ICRP. As a part of the assessment, dispersion calculation were conducted. The contoured figure uh, on the left uh, shows, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, on the right uh, shows a result near the plant. The area with higher concentration uh, than the one in the surrounding area shown in the dotted line is limited to the uh, very vicinity of the plant, as you see. The further the distance is, the lower the concentration. If the distance is more than two to three kilometers away from the plant, the concentration is expected to be lower than the background tritium and thus undetectable. The left one is showing the whole simulation area. Based on the result, the concentration at the model boundary is expected to be extremely low Please note that the color indicating the concentration level in the left and the right figure differs. This slide shows the result of the dose assessment for a representative person, a hypothetical person uh, influenced most by the discharge of out-treated water, uh, namely living uh, near the plant, working in and on the sea, on the beach near the plant and eating seafood caught only in the sea area in front of the plant. Even in the uh, conservative case, the result uh, well below uh, the dose limit uh, for general public of one millisievert per year for the general public and also uh, 0 0.05 millisievert per year of dose concerned. This sea area monitoring program is also enhanced. And since April uh, 2022, monitoring of radioactivity, uh, including tritium in the vicinity of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station and along the coast of Fukushima prefecture has been enhanced and expanded. 
the result of the measurement is available on the TEPCO website, uh, which, uh, which appears in English, Chinese, uh, and Korean. And IEA has been uh, reviewing our initiatives. International experts accompanied uh, with uh, IIA officials uh, visited Tokyo and our plant. Uh, the mission is to review and, uh, and evaluate our initiative in terms of safety. The first mission was conducted in February 2022, and the report is available on IAEA's website. The second mission was uh, conducted last November and the review results are expected to be released shortly. IAEA also has a plan of collaborative analysis mission in which IAEA, along with some uh, selected laboratories in the world, analyze uh, samples of um, outstreeted water. Furthermore, uh, the IAEA labs, international labs, the Japanese regulator, and some domestic labs jointly collected seawater uh, sea sediment and marine creature samples and uh, will uh, compare the analysis result from each laboratories. All the results will be published on the IAEA web website. This slide shows what TEPCO is publish publicizing uh, the discharge of the outstreeted water on the website. Treated water portal site was set up to uh, compile information uh, such as short movies. The portal site is explained in Japanese and English, simplified Chinese, traditional Cantonese, traditional Taiwanese, and Korean. This slide explains the status of the marine organism uh, uh, rearing test that we have been conducting. One group is rearing in the regular seawater and the other is in seawater with outstreeted water added. By now, no significant difference between the two groups has uh, not been observed. We studied the tritium concentration in the body of flatfish in seawater with outstreeted water. The concentration has never exceeded one in the water. The result is consistent with what is generally known. Uh, thus, TEPCO is, uh, is making its utmost effort to securing safety of outstreeted water discharge. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sado. Next speaker is Dr. Hideshi Michino. He is a counselor of Export and International Affairs Group, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and officially, ma'am. He will share with us the status of Japanese food regarding radionuclides. Dr. Michino, please. Thank you, Dr. Hibiki. Uh, I'm Hideshi Michino, uh, Deputy Assistant Minister, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fish. Today, I would like to deliver a presentation on the current status of Japanese food regarding radionuclide following the accident of the TEPCO Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station in 2011 in the question and answer format. The first question is, how much food product is exported to Hong Kong from Japan? The answer is 15.5 uh, billion Hong Kong dollars. The value of food export from Japan to Hong Kong has been increasing in the past 10 years, reaching a record high in 2021. The second question is how much food product is exported to Macau uh, from Japan? The answer is 3.75 billion Macau uh, Pataka in 2021. The value of food exp export from Japan to Macau has also been 
increasing in the past 10 years, reaching a record high in 2021. <coughs> uh, <coughs> the third question is, how do we control radionuclide in food production? The answer is, uh, Japan soon after the accident started the control measures of radionuclide in primary production, the food processing, and the food distribution stages. As the production st stages, uh, <coughs> wide ranging efforts are made such as decontamination of farmland and fruit trees, control of feed, and fertilization of crop with potassium to block the ab absorption of radiocesium. Next is, uh, how can we prevent the uh, exportation of product exceeding the Japanese maximum levels to consumers? The answer is, Food monitoring and the shipment restriction prevent the product exceeding the Japanese maximum level from entering from food chain and be exp being exp exported. Uh, the government conduct monitoring at the production stage. If a value exceeding the Japanese maximum level is detected in sample, the food shall be disposed of and further shipment of the food from the same area are restricted. Therefore, uh, products with radioactive concentration exceeding the maximum level are neither distributed domestically nor exported. Uh, how do we, next is, how do we keep transparency and uh, communicate with the public on the risk of radionuclide in food. Radionuclide concentration in food has been monitored since 19 March, uh, 19 March, 19th March 2011. The national government opened uh, to public all of the monitoring data and published the FAQ on food and radiation, both in Japanese and in English. The radiological risk from food intake has been regular, regularly communicated with the public. Uh, these are the view of risk communication at the University in Japan and uh, Consulate General of Japan in Hong Kong uh, provides uh, concise information. Uh, next is, what are the latest monitoring results in Japan? Uh, this shows the result of monitoring on radiocesium in major items in 2022. These are agricultural produce and major fishery harvest and processed food for a wider area distribution, which could become a commodity for export. Uh, more than 22,000 uh, samples have been tested and all results are below the Japanese maximum level. That is uh, <coughs> 10 times stricter than uh, Hong Kong and uh, in the international standard. Next is, is there any third party evaluation of uh, Japan's measures? Uh, the joint uh, FAO IAEA center states, Japan's measures to monitor and respond to issues regarding radionuclide contamination of food are appropriate. And that the food supply chain is controlled effectively by relevant authorities and that the public food supply is safe. Uh, next question is, uh, how many countries and regions lifted or remained important measures on Japanese food? 
a total of 55 countries and regions have introduced import measures on Japanese food following the nuclear power station accident. And nearly 80% of them, 43, have eliminated the measures. Uh, this is the last slide. Uh, this shows uh, conclusions of my presentation. Scientific evidence indicates the health risk of radionuclide in food from Japan is negligible to both the people in Japan and in foreign countries. Majority of the countries in the world have no relevant import control measures on food from Japan, including those lifted them in the past decade. The upstream water is to be discharged under the control of the government, ensuring safety of the marine environment and the seafood with high transparency. We request support of the audience to disseminate information based on uh, sound fact and science. We expect that people in the disaster area need strong support from Hong Kong and Macau to recover their lives and owners. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Michino. Next speaker is Mr. Hiroyasu Hasegawa. He is the Director of Research and Technological Guidance Division, Fisheries Agency. He will share with us monitoring of seafood related to the discharge of Alfred Water. Mr. Hasegawa, please. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you clearly. Thank you, Professor, Professor Hibiki. And good afternoon, everyone. I am Hiroyas Hasegawa, and I am in charge of the Fisheries Agency. The title of the presentation is Monitoring of Seafoods related to the charge of Alps treated water. We have been monitoring radioactive substances in seafoods since immediately after the nuclear accident. Among them, I'd like to first introduce the results in Fukushima Prefecture, which was mostly affected by the accident. By the accident. First, I'd like to talk about the radioactive season monitoring conducted by the Fukushima Prefectural Government. From April 2011 to the end of February 2023, a total of 75,125 samples were monitored, and 3,499 3, samples were monitored as of this fiscal year. In the graph, orange indicates samples exceeding the Japanese maximum level of 100 pepper per kilogram, and blue indicates uh, those below the level. Immediately after the, the accident, about one third of samples exceeded the Japanese maximum level. However, due to the rapid decrease in the concentration of radio cesium in seawater, almost all the seafoods are now within the Japanese maximum level. This slide shows the transition of radioactive cesium concentrations in seafoods from Fukushima Prefecture in past 12 years. Immediately after the, the accident, the values plotted in blue were high, but over time they have decreased, and these days most samples are below the detection limit, and only a few samples are above the detection limit. In addition, the commercial fisher in Fukushima Prefecture voluntarily monitor by taking samples from all fish species landed each time. Therefore, the number of samples is increasing with the increasing landings 
reaching more than uh, 18,000 samples in 2022. Only one krosoi, a kind of rockfish, exceeded the Japanese maximum level and shipments are still suspended. Next, I'll give an overview of tourism monitoring in fiscal 2022. As Tanabe san explained earlier, the safety of, uh, of Alp Street water is guaranteed. On the other hand, on the other hand, at the time of the nuclear accident in 2011, adverse impact on reputation spread to areas far from Fukushima, even though there were no safety problems. Therefore, the purpose of this monitoring is to prevent such a situation from occurring. And we analyze seafoods taken in the fishery and aquaculture industries among the coast and offshore of the Pacific Ocean side of the eastern Japan. The fish species to be analyzed are flounder, which is a major fish species on the coast, which is common to each region. And the other are representative seafoods of each region. Tori team analysis, analysis is conducted based on internationally recognized methods. In addition, fiscal 2023, we plan to introduce a method to quickly produce analysis results. As of the end of February this year, the analysis of 194 samples has been completed, and the results are published on the website of the fishery agency and updated. On the left are the results of the analysis of seafood for this fiscal year. And on the right side are the results of the analysis of seawater in the coast and offshore of the Pacific Ocean side of the eastern Japan. You can see that the concentration of tissue-free tritium in seafood and the concentration of tritium in seawater sea uh, about the same. Uh, is it a little early for dinner time? And uh, this photo was taken at the sushi restaurant in Iwaki City, about 40 kilometers south of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear, nuclear power station. All the sushi on the plate is caught off the coast of Fukushima. I love the fish called Mexicali on the top right. This one. Um, of the plate. But Mexicali loses its freshness quickly, so sushi can only be eaten locally. I would like everyone gather today to visit Fukushima and enjoy delicious fish. That's it for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Hasegawa. The last speaker is Mr. Shinichi Sato. He is Director of International Nuclear Cooperation Division, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, MOFA. He will share with us communication with the international community regarding the handling of Alp Street water. Mr. Sato, please. Uh, we can hear you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Good evening. Good afternoon, sorry. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Sato. I'm the director for International Nuclear Corporation. First of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm very, I would love, uh, I would have, I would love to be in there in Hong Kong with all of you, but um, unfortunately I couldn't make the trip this time. But I'm very grateful for this invitation to participate in this meeting. Firstly, uh, my brief presentation of today consists of four pillars. Uh, or opposite for the issue, and the second is communication, and the third is the IAEA, and lastly, a 
would like to uh, briefly talk about uh, on this issue. So, uh, <coughs> firstly, I would like to talk about our commitment. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Sorry. Um, sorry, uh, it seems that we have some minor technical problems here in Tokyo, so uh, if you allow me, I will uh, continue talking without using my presentation on PowerPoint. Um, so uh, as I said, that the micro brief presentation consists of both of us, and I'd like to also, first I'd like to talk about the, our commitment. Uh, our commitment is that the uh, we have four important concepts. First is safety. The second is transparency, the third is um, accountability, and lastly, uh, confidence. Um, <clears throat> I think that these four concepts are very important because, first of all, we want to show, and we are showing, and will be showing, that the ultimate discharge of our facility quota will be uh, safe, uh, will be discharged into the city ensuring that there is, no harm, there is no harm to the environment or human health. And also, we understand perfectly the importance of making you feel making you you feel safe with this uh, discharge of our facilities water. That's the reason why we are <clears throat> or we have been explaining the uh, the issue to the international community in a highly transparent manner, uh, based on scientific evidence, while continuing to undergo by the IAEA, and will continue to do so in the future. And in that in that sense, we. Are for this opportunity because we, thanks to you, we have a very precious opportunity to talk to the people, our friends in Hong Kong and Macau uh, this way. Um, as for the communication, uh, we have been uh, carrying out uh, a lot of briefing sessions here in Tokyo to the diplomatic group and uh, media station here in Tokyo. And also, we are organizing brief sessions with a bi bilateral briefing sessions with uh, countries which show interest in this issue. And also, um, uh, as I said, doing this operation, this uh, this, uh, this uh, operation, counting on the help of the International, uh, International uh, uh, Atomic Energy Agency. And also, uh, we are very uh, we always, or whenever we receive requests from media, not only the domestic Japanese media, but also from the uh, media from different countries, we hope to share all the information that the media requires. And so I think the Hong Kong, as I said, this opportunity is very important for us to, to uh, first talk with our friends in Hong Kong and Macau and to deepen our understanding of this issue. Uh, of course, we, as, um, whenever we receive some questions or requests uh, from the uh, citizens in Hong Kong and Macau, we always uh, answer it with transparency and with professionalism. And also, um, uh, the, the, our communication with the world media is very important, so uh, whenever we have this kind of opportunity, we will be very glad to repeat this kind of uh, exchange session. And the, uh, the third pillar of my presentation is, uh, is about the importance of the IAEA. As you know, IAEA is the International Authority on Nuclear Safety Standards. And uh, on this issue, on this issue of discharge of all the water from Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, the Director General Grossi of the International of the IAEA said that the discharge of the processed water will be in full conformity with international standards. Uh, we and we have um, received many, many uh, visits, technical visits from Vienna, technical visits of IAEA from Vienna. And the, those visits um, check uh, the uh, safety aspects as well as regulatory aspects. Uh, and, uh, and 
so far, they are very happy with what we have been achieving. And we hope that we will continue working with the IAEA very closely, and we believe that the uh, close cooperation with the IAEA will help us to deepen the understanding of, uh, of the international community, including Hong Kong and uh, Macau. And now, finally, I would like to deliver our message to you. First, um, uh, we are talking about the upper street of water. Sometimes, as my colleagues previously explained, sometimes we see uh, articles or words saying that the um, upper street, instead of upper street of water, says contaminated water, but it's not contaminated water. The radioactive concentration of the water plant <coughs> this plant discharge into the sea of heavy public street water is far below the regulatory standard. And second point that I want to set, uh, set the second message from us is that the uh, the release of water containing tritium from nuclear facilities is common practice in all over the world in compliance, of course, in compliance with their own domestic laws and regulations. And the third message uh, is that the misinformation or disinformation is causing reputational damage and adversely affecting the lives of people in Fukush uh, Fukushima. We would like to ask you to help us in the reconstruction of Fukushima. Um, so now, now the question is, if all the street is water is safe, what are the local people afraid of? Um, the local people are afraid of the rumors of uh, reputational damages which are caused and uh, which are not based on scientific facts. And as I said, and that kind of um, reputation rumors, unfounded rumors, only serve to um, affect negatively their livelihood and future. Um, the final message for me is that the um, uh, uh, we first uh, we really appreciate we are very grateful for the continuous support from Hong Kong and Macau in the whole process of rec uh, whole reconstruction process of the affected area of, uh, from the uh, uh, great earthquake in 2011. And we know that Hong Kong and Macau are very important partners for reconstruction from the great earthquake in 2011. And we will continue providing information for our friends in Hong Kong and Macau in a transparent manner and timely manner. Uh, we are facing a very difficult challenge, but we also believe the concept of bending adversity. Uh, whenever we face difficulties, instead of um, giving up, we will do our best. And but we can't, we can't achieve this difficult. Um, we can't achieve or we can't uh, overcome us this difficult task without the help of our friends. And uh, so we would like to continue counting on the help of um, help and understanding from the people, friends of Hong Kong and Macau. Well, thank you very much for your attention. And I'm very sorry for the technical uh, problems that have occurred in, in here in Tokyo. But thank you very much.